Hi, my name is Ken Schwartz of Precise Sharpening and today I'm going to be reviewing a technique called a zero grind. Uh, I'll go into this in a bit more detail but first I want to go over uh, some details of the belt grinder that I'm using. The grinder in the foreground is a is a coot belt grinder with a three horse variable speed motor. Uh, I've gone into more detail on this in the past but one of the things I want to point out is the parts of the belt grinder as, as concerns what we're doing. So you have the wheel in the front, you have a slack area of the belt over here then you have a supported area of the belt called a platen, and then you have a contact wheel in the back. So the purpose of the platen is to give a flat surface so that when you press against it you get a very flat surface. This area allows you to have a certain amount of slack as it moves up and down and this allows you to do concave grinds, this allows you to do convex grinds. Uh, of note is this area and this area right to either side of the platen. Now because it's supported here just a little past the platen if you press down with this much force you see it dips a little bit whereas over here it dips a lot for the same amount of force. So by using selective areas over here you can control the amount of curvature or convexity that you impart to your blade. Um, the reasons for this I'll show in a minute when we start getting into the sharpening. Now this area because it's such a short distance between the contact wheel and this uh, is even stiffer. So you can use that area to advantage as well. Uh, anyhow the particular knife that I'm going to be using is a Richmond Artifacts. This is a very abrasion resistant steel. Uh, it's an M390 steel. Very high quality knife, high quality steel. So the initial angle that's put on the knife is a very reasonable angle for most users but some people want a little bit more extreme and I tend towards more extreme. So what I'm going to be doing is sharpening this so that these two sides of the knife essentially will be meeting and there won't be a bevel on the edge. There won't be a distinct bevel. But rather there will be the two surfaces meeting with a slight bit of con concavity, con I'm sorry, convexity going towards where the edge actually occurs. So for this task I'm going to be using diamond belts. Uh, these diamond belts, the first one is a 125 micron diamond belt. I'll go through a succession of them. Uh, this material is also available in a, uh, for the Edge Pro in 1x6 and 2x6 sizes and also available as a uh, bench hone in a 3x8 size mounted on glass. So I'm going to start this motor off at a fairly low speed and I'm going to be running the belt in a direction going towards me rather than away from me. So let me bring the RPMs up just a little bit more. Well, let's say eh, just a little short of a thousand. Okay, and I'm going to be using the glove to further support it. And so what I'm going to be doing, and let me see that the camera position is covering the area of interest. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this in a little more detail. And right about there okay so here we go so what I'm going to be doing is bringing the knife down almost to where the whole surface is touching or very close to it and using my hand as a platen 
grinding very close. Essentially what I'm doing is very similar to what you would call thinning an edge. But I'm essentially thinning the edge down to zero. And I'm using my hands right now as the platen. So it's a sort of soft platen that will give a slight degree of convexity to the edge. And let's see. Okay, and as you can see, uh, this diamond cuts really fast. And I'll go a little steeper as I'm coming in towards this area here, as I said, so that. Okay, a little more towards the tip. Okay, and what you can see now is that this whole area, there, there's essentially not a single bevel on it. And we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side now. And very close to right on there. Just a little short. Towards the front. Okay, we're going to work again in this area right here. It's even a little bit more, more acute. Okay, and you will see that we are getting some scratches over past there, but we'll take care of that a little bit later. So, now let's switch out from the 125, and we'll go up to a 74 micron belt. And already the majority of the work is done, and as you can see, uh, particularly for a very abrasion resistant steel like this, uh, M390, the diamond just cuts right through it, uh, making it look like it's just any other steel, uh, which it is not. This thing has exceptionally good edge retention characteristics. So let's continue on a little bit more. Yes, I'm cutting into the leather on my glove a little bit, but that's okay.
avoided doing the entire knife with the 125 grit because it would scratch too deeply. And again, I'll be using that technique to avoid the logo. And turning out the front just a little bit as well. Okay. All right, so this gives me, and I have a fairly large burr on there. I'll get rid of the burr, and to do that, very light motion across so that you don't bring the bird to the other side. Okay. And still a little bit here. See how well this slices through a piece of paper. Well, pretty much effortlessly. Um, straight down. Pretty effortless. So, this is at a 74 grit, and we will continue on a little bit. Uh, I may not go through the whole progression, and I will finish up the knife uh, on the bench with some finer compounds. Let's go down to a 45 micron belt. A little further refinement. I'm not going to go through the entire sequence, but that gives you a general idea, again, to review some of the concepts on this. Uh, using the diamond belts, you go through very abrasion-resistant steels with ease. Uh, this would take quite a good bit longer period of time to do uh, using aluminum oxide-based technologies. Uh, the flat platen, the area right in front of the flat platen, gives you just a little bit of concavity and a little flex to reduce the amount of convexity that you're putting on the edge. Uh, we've gone from having a distinct bevel to a convex grind. So in a sense it's converting it to a convex zero type grind which is as close to the limits of the two edges just meeting but with a slight bit more curvature at the very end. Thank you very much for your time and I uh, look forward to your comments.